What is up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerdcastle for the next episode of Sunless Sea. My name is Splattercat. Happy to have you here today as we hang out for a little while. And we actually made it to Nook, finally. So we will read the apology letter to Nook. Someone has entrusted you with the correspondence of... Oh, I can just read it. Maybe i got to go into the city here. A gap in this colossal sea monster's throat has been forced open with thick heart metal beams. They strain under the pressure, but hold. As you pass through, your submarine lights pass over a message carved in a floating piece of some unfortunate's hull. Beyond is nook. Beyond is freedom. Beyond is the rest is scratched out. The water presses against the airlock door. The breathing and slithering of the beast gives it a rhythm of a drumbeat. You don your heavy diving suit and give the order to cycle the airlock. Water rushes in and you begin the slow swim down to the port. It soon becomes obvious that you are overdressed for the occasion. People of Nook swim and breathe in the cloudy maw water with no apparent discomfort. Most are naked with just a few clad in rotten rags that stream from their skin with no concern for modesty. None will communicate with you even if they can. Those who acknowledge your presence just laugh silently at your bulky suit and unnecessary air hose. You'll need a different approach. Uh, I guess I'll go in naked? At least you're unlikely to run into anybody that you know. You undress every button, every stitch. The door opens, ice cold water rushes upwards. Instinct holds your mouth shut. 10 seconds, 20 seconds, your lungs burn, holding in the last gulp of air. Your legs thrash, you can't hold it in, it escapes. You're choking on water. It forces its way into your lungs, the taste of burning salt suffocating. Every attempt to gasp, scream, or then through the exhaustion and panic, you realize you're breathing. It's hard work, your lungs fight against the weight, but it's enough. You can tolerate it, at least for now. And so the beast quivers with distaste at our trespass. The waves are flecked with light. Taste of freedom is bitter. Uh, we can swim to the Great Maw. We can attempt to mingle with the Nook folk. We can search for the recipient of the almost dead man's letter. Where will you find his tooth house? Does it get better as I taste of freedom gets better and better and better? Okay, so as my taste of freedom gets higher. Oh, I don't know. We could take from the weak. Compile a port report, I guess. A vile place, festering and acidic. No laws but those of tooth and claw, written in scars. Civilization impossible. Making tea would be a logistical impossibility. Yet the inhabitants seem content. Many have come here from London. The Connet, the Presbyterate, abandoning cultured life for this tenuous existence. They grin, their mouths full of stolen flesh, or float naked and carefree. Many have nothing and nothing to lose. A group of swimmers dart past, hunting gleefully. One squeezes your soldier companionably. You've never met her before. So we got a taste of freedom, but we lost tolerance for nook water. The more of it to breathe, the less you remember air. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Let's mingle with the nook folk. They acknowledge your presence, but little more. Most shrink back, assuming you mean harm. Others deliberately swim just above you in a crude attempt at intimidation. They carry bone knives or tooth-tipped spears. A few gesture to you in welcome, invitation. It's really unclear. The slightly glutinous water makes speech impossible, so the natives have developed a language of signs. You can interpret the most basic. A finger pulled across the throat, for example, is one of the more polite invitations to depart. So what happens when I run out of nook folk air? I guess I'll swim back. I can't really deliver the letter for right now. I don't want to, I mean... 60% chance is rough. I guess I could hazard it so that I don't have to come out anymore. A complex exchange of hand signals suggests you should swim up. The Latitudinarian's home can be found in the Great Maw. Time to leave. Your lungs unaccustomed to breathing water are beginning to labor. You must return to the ship. There, the bright light of your submarine's main beam, the airlock. Home. Air again. How refreshing. So you can't keep more than nine of it when you go back up to the surface. Gotcha. Oh, really? So if I bring mushroom wine with me, it makes it easier for me to breathe water. Cool. Oh, wow. I can sell a sunlight-filled mirror catch box for s caskets of sapphires. That's pretty good. Oh, torpedo components, too. Yes, please. Uh, fuel and everything else, basically pretty standard. And then we'll bail out because I think our goal, ultimately, was to get back to... Yeah, 
is to get back to London in this episode. Let's go ahead and surface on up. We've got plenty of fuel to make it back. We've got plenty of supply. We've got a bunch of port reports, so I think we'll be pretty good there as well. I can't deliver the letter right now because I ran out of nook water, which sounds like something just nasty that you harvest out of, like, a bile duct or something. Like, yeah, this filthy nook water. Put that in the jar over there with the rest of it. Someday, perhaps, I shall make a tonic of nook water. No Port Cecil. We'll just continue to the left. As hard and as fast as we can, because that's how we like to do it in this boat. That's how we like to do it. I'm glad the summer's finally over. I'm not a big fan of summer. Summer was awesome when you were, like, a kid. And you actually got, like, three months off. And I suppose summer is still awesome if you're, like, a teacher or something. But for everybody else that has to work through the summer, it's just shitty hot weather that you can't go outside. You sweat through your shirt within eight seconds of the sun hitting your face. And then you still have to work while, you know, everybody's running around being happy. And by everybody, I mean the children. If I have to be miserable, they have to be miserable. That's what I demand. That's all that I've ever demanded of life. It's only fair. We'll cut a course for Guider's Morn right now. I had to do summer school one year. My mom made me do it. It was unpleasant. I didn't really enjoy it. I tried year-round school, too. I was always moving around schools when I was growing up. And so, like... Year-round school, you had two months on, one month off, or three months on, one month off, or something like that. Which was kind of interesting. I mean, if you timed it right, you got all of December. And, you know, instead of getting, like, the two weeks off or whatever, but mostly when you are a kid, none of your friends had the time off. So, basically, you were just bored a lot of the time. Unless all your friends were from year-round school, which my friends were not. My friends all went to normal school, so unfortunately, I was left wanting for companionship throughout those times. And then we did summer school one time, which was the worst idea ever. Whoever came up with summer school should most assuredly be 100% punished. Someone should just take them and just drag them along the bottom of a barnacled boat somewhere. That's a terrible idea. Be like, how would you like to do summer school? How would you like to throw yourself off a cliff? No, thank you. I'll be at home playing Nintendo. Later! That's how I treated my summers. My summers were just unadulterated Nintendo time. Non-stop for months. Just chilling. Although I did play sports too, so usually that was in there. What gets played in summer? Baseball? Yeah, I think baseball's in the summer. And then I did swim team in between. So I still did swim team training like in the summer and whatnot. When I was doing, you know, the three months off or whatever. So that was still cool. Uh, we wanted to go down and we wanted to get our port report. It's a very chancy challenge. We may get a sailor stabbed. Oh, well, we succeeded and got a port report. Hooray for us. We will also explore the Morn. Uh, there's a piratey challenge down here. We can fight him or we can flee. I'll fight them. We've already done that before, and so we shot them and took their $25 because those pirates don't know us like that. What? What? Those pirates don't know us like that. Eee, eee. Okay. Now that we're out of here, I'm going to go ahead and pull on out. And back to London we go. It's time for us to head back to Jolly Old. Now, I don't know if all of England fell through the earth or if just London did. That's one of those things that I'm not... It's a little bit ambiguous as far as Fallen London is concerned. I'm assuming since it's called Fallen London and not Fallen the entire England, I guess that's fine, or like Fallen Britain, you know what I mean? Fallen UK, which would have a really, really unfortunate abbreviation. But anyways, <laughs> I, since it's not called that, I'm gonna assume it's fine. You know my shirt just did that thing? I hate it so much. Like when you're sitting in your desk chair and like over the course of like several hours, your shirt just slowly rides up. And the next thing you know, just like your love handles is hanging out the back, and you just be like, oh man, I'm part manatee now. It's just like hanging out back there, man. I've gained weight. I've gained like 25 pounds since I moved back home after I got done with college. When I was in college, you know, I was trying to, that's where I met my wife, and so we were just dating back then, so I was trying to keep it like fit as a fiddle, you know what I mean? I was trying to keep it impressive so that when you get to like bedroom time, you're just like, Bwah! and you got like the pecs and the abs and shit, and she's like, oh my. And you're like, you're damn straight, girl. But now that we're, like, married, I've just given up all hope. I'm just like, you better get used to this otherwise porpoise-like shape because, unfortunately, I lack the energy to continue. Oh, no, that's an alkaeus class Corvette who is actually doing a pretty good job at outrunning us right now. I'm surprised. Um, if our engine blows up, we're totally hosed. Just letting you know. Let's swing around the backside right here. Maybe lose him. And then we'll put into port and we'll wait him out if we have to. 
So I needed to bring somebody here. Oh yes, the T with the fa- oh, 200 Echoes. The irrepressible cannoneer is convinced that the factor knows more about a weapon. The company's terrible prototype. You will need a bribe. It's only fair. Alright, well let me get my- hold on. Let me get my port report first. Now that we got that, that doesn't actually require me to have something awaits you. So I'm gonna take T with the factor. That gave us supplies and we lost some terror. We've learned of an- oh, we haven't done this, okay. You sit on the veranda of the factor's house, looking out over the fungal jungle, an expanse of green and sour gold. The air is thick with hovering spores, the scones are stale, even the tea has a hint of mildew. But the factor is good company, he shares odd stories about the ice and roses of Irem, the monstrosities of the Sea of Lilies, and a little restaurant in Venderbite where he enjoyed the most extraordinary seafood. Venderbite, I know! I'd never met a tomb call in a Sukukuk, but you must visit the place. Do you know it? He also has a load of Beligus Frond carted aboard your ship. He waves away your thanks. I have eaten so much of the stuff that I fear I might be transformed entirely into fungus. He leans confidentially towards you. It happens, you know. But one does have to eat rather a lot of it first. Okay, let's take tea with the factor, because we're already here for the quest, so why not? Even with the bribe, the Factor is reluctant to talk, but it seems the Cannoneer knew him in the old days, and he's even more reluctant to have the Cannoneer talk about the old days. Finally, he gives in. It was a place called Esteval. You know it? It's a striking place. You wouldn't believe me if I told you. It's east. A long way east. We took it off all the maps. Not the maps that last Z, anyways. That's all that I know. Now, shall we pass... Or we shall let the pass lie where it fell? Certainly we shall. You've been kind enough already, so... Why, why push his patience? And then it's back into London for us, so... It's my jam right there, and I don't even know what it's called. I have no idea what that song is called, but it's a dope-ass song. I like it. I like all those old, like, Grenadiers tunes and, like, sailing shanties and whatnot. That's one of the reasons, actually, I really, really like The Patriot, the movie. Not necessarily because it's historically accurate or anything like that, but just because I like the music of it. It's got, like, one of the best soundtracks I've ever heard in a film. Like, everything in there is, like, super addictive. Also, you get to see Mel Gibson go ham on people with, with a tomahawk. And how many movies are there out there where you actually get to see tomahawk usage? I love tomahawks, and it doesn't happen very often. There's, like, what, Dances with Wolves? There's, like, The Patriot? There's Last of the Mohicans? But then, like, what else is there? I don't know. Oh, last of the Mohicans, though, he had that big horn thing. That big, giant, two-handed, like, shovel horn thing that he smacked the dude in the shin with and his bone popped out the back of his leg. I was like, oh, you just got rolled out on, son. You just got rolled out on so hard. What you gonna do? Look at your dumbass femur sticking out the back of your leg. That's what happens when you mess with the heater, with the champion. <laughs> That's all that I have for right now. We stop abruptly here at the Nerd Castle. Hand over the cargo. And since we've already done that chat, I'm not going to waste time on it. We got our money back, so that's good. I've got nothing to hide, so they can definitely check the ship if they want. Menace's nightmare strength has gone up a little bit. Our fear has gone down to 50. We'll collect our messages from the Harbor Master. The Blind Bruiser wants us to take another package. Yes, sure, why not? Another thousand echoes. Unstamped crate needs to go to Polythreme in the Sea of Voices before we return next time. Now that we're here, I will rest in a room above the Blind Helmsman. We have a restful night. We've lost some terror. We've lost a little bit of cash. Morning papers. We got recent news. Fragments stayed the same. And then we'll go back to the city. We needed to go back up to... Oh, shit. Well, I should have. I forgot. I needed to go to... Uh, Low Barnett. What's going on at the Rose Market? What's happening out here? The tattooed courier will pay well for a consignment of Scintillac. Yeah, I have that actually. Take it. 105 Echoes. It makes admirable jewelry, she explains, but exceptional tea. Two of the market's horse mass attendants help her wheel the box away. Well, there you go. There's our Scintillac taken care of. What did our venturer want? He wanted either a Lorn Fluke or he wanted Lamentable Relics. I'll pick up Lamentable Relics along the way or I can get it for like 25-ish Echoes somewhere. Uh, let's go to the Spectacled Admiral. We already picked up our strategic information, so we need to ask if he's got anything else that he wants us to help with. He wants us to go to Port Cecil. 
in the principles of coral somewhere to the northeast of London. I... Well, I suppose... Turn in some of our port reports. Not all of them, but some of them for the underwater places that we're not going to be going back to this time around. Mount Palmerston, Godfall, Venderbite. Very good. Wither. We've also got the Chapel of Light. Khan's Heart. Got 75 echoes for that one. Not bad at all. Codex, probably important. Frost found, probably a good idea too. Wisdom, did the oracles look hungry? Wisdom was... Oh yeah, Wisdom was the uh, the prison. Got Irem, so there's that. We should probably repair our hull while we're here too, I just noticed. Dehut, Demo. So Dehut, Nook will stay with me. Low Barnett will stay with me. The Undercrow we can get rid of. And so that'll work for right now. That got us paid up. We're sitting at 4,000 Echoes right now. The next ship we're going to be able to jump into is actually kind of expensive, but we actually needed to rebuy all of the stuff that we already had previously. So, what do I have going on inside of my hold right now? My forward gun is 24-24 and requires torpedo components. I'm thinking the Bandersnatch sounds great. Uh, it requires torpedoes. Does a lot of damage. I'm going to take it. Bander Snatch is now ours as far as the Iron and Misery Company goes. We could get ourselves into the Cotterell and Hather Sage right now, and we'd actually travel a lot faster. That's over double the speed of our current engine. So I'm going to sell our current engine, and I'm just going to spend a bunch of money on the Cotterell and Hather Sage. While we're also here, we're going to go back to Wolfstack. We are going to sell the Scintillac. Because if there's one thing we need right now, it's cash. I'm going to hold on to the motor salt. Cask of mushroom wine in case we go back. Um, sell the parabola in it because we're not going to be up to Palmerston for a while. We've got enough fuel. Instead, I would suggest we take supplies. That'll top out most of what we earned on this run. But on the plus side, we've got ourselves a very, very nice engine and a very, very nice forward gun. And we've still got 800 Echoes to play around with for a better deck weapon. So I would suggest that we do that as well. The Caminus Yards, in fact. He's got a Health Thrasher. That's tech weapon, aft weapon. That does 1818, and it costs 900. A little risky. I don't think I'm going to do it. So instead, we'll go to Caro's Naval Surplus. That one's 12. That one's 5 and does 15. So I'll take that one. And then that was my deck weapon. That's a forward weapon. So I can sell the forward weapon. I can sell those. And there it is. We are now much more formidable on the sea. Our damage has gone up considerably. It's gone up very, very considerably. I would suggest that we put more points into gunnery if we really, really, really want to be badasses. We don't have a lot of secrets left, but I'm thinking about just dumping them into here. And I can buy secrets later on with money. Oh, we got two irons that time around. Good for us. Sometimes you get bonuses. It'll give you, like, double ups. So there it is. So we got two irons that time, too. We're up to 83. And as far as that's concerned for our boat, that's only bumped us up by, like, 13 damage from our iron stat. You don't really get that much out of it, but if we go into any challenge that requires fighting, we're going to be pretty good at it. Uh, aside from anything else that we need to do, I am going to put in at the dry dock, which I missed. We will use the Admiralty Yards. There it is. We lost three favors, but we are retrofitted now and good to go. Aside from that, I think we're in good shape. So let's set sail again this time around. Uh, we've got to go to Polythreme. So... It 
thinking we go up like so to the Empire of Hands. So essentially, we'll gain altitude right here. We'll go to Low Bar Net. We'll go to Hunter's Keep to get our horror knocked back down. We'll cut east along kind of the northern quadrant, and then we'll go south as far as we can. And that should be pretty good. We should be able to accomplish the Irrepressible Cannoneer's little chunk of quests. I am going to be shooting everything that moves while we're out here because I have the ability to do so. And we deal 50 plus damage on shot now. That being the case, we are kind of badasses. We're able to hurt things. We're able to hurt things a lot. Uh, eyes on deck for that one. I don't want to deal with terror. We don't have something awaits us right now, and I don't know if we can do the exchange of tails without something awaits us. We may need to wait it out. There we go. I knew I'd find the deeper waters eventually. You gotta struggle with it for a little bit. You gotta try real hard. Try real hard. Now then, we pull into low bar net. We've got nightmares about a vast eye, even though we just kicked out our nightmares a little bit ago. We've got something awaits us now, so we should be able to attempt to do the storytelling in here. So. I will explore the church. We got a port report for low bar net. I will trade stories with the congregation. Let's go ahead and we'll give stories of... Oh, I don't know, Nook. You describe an immense mouth set into the Z floor, its rows of razored teeth. Few know this, you say, but during the Mordecalia festival, the Nook dwellers push on the teeth, playing them like the ivories of a gargantuan piano, and then the moss sings, a shuddering, bellowing dirge, which causes whirlpools on the surface. The listening Zaylers frown, one unfolds a chart. We've also got Antha, and I think I, th I thought I kept another one, but we'll go with that. You talk of consuming desire in mornings where every moment gleams with promise. You talk about broken vows, a love shattered, about a heart growing sharp as a barber's razor. You talk about how clearly we see the passions of others while obscuring our own motives. The listening Zaylers cast their eyes down, looking into the past. So now we are tales of captivated listeners. And so we're getting a little bit better at that. I don't know if it's worth the money. Thought I still had one for Hideaway or something. Mm -hmm. Apparently I'm out. What can I do with my storytelling? If I have Storyteller 4, I can participate in the contest of stories. If I have Storyteller 7, I can trade stories with the gentleman in the rear pew. Okay. Cool. Good stuff to know. So that's actually something I didn't realize you wanted to do that in bulk. I thought that it was just going to take like one story and then something would happen. Instead, that's one of those things where you probably want to bring back like your entire load of port reports at one point or another and just kind of see what happens, see how it plays out. For now, we're out of time. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerdcast for the next episode of Sunless Sea. I look forward to seeing you all in tomorrow's episode. It's a fun game and I'm happy to share it with you all. I will see you then. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get my bonus for the cheery. Oh, never mind. The house. we got something else going on here. Well, we'll talk about that next time, all right? Bye.